How are you doing today, folks? And welcome to Red Wolf EDC. Now, before we even get started, this is a video that was requested by a subscriber. Is there ever anything that you want me to record, a video you want me to be able to talk about, then hit me up on Instagram at Red Wolf EDC or leave a comment below and I will happily go about creating that video. Um, I procrastinate a lot. So this is requested about a month ago. So here we are. But, you know, better late than never, at least. This is also going to be an updating series because my favorites pretty much change all the time. Um, these are going to be my current top five. Several of these, though, it's almost not fair for them to be in my top five because I'm very, very biased for these knives for reasons that have to do with, well, not the knives itself. So this is going to be the only time you're going to be seeing them in the actual top five, but they are my true and genuine top five. They're just not the ones I always carry. Um, every single one of these knives has a story. That's me as a person. It needs to have some sort of connection to be interesting to me. So here we go. First and foremost is the DSK Deluxe. Now, I want to be very, very clear. Every positive thing I'm going to say about this knife has nothing to do with the maker DSK Dan Sullivan knives. I posted a video on my channel in very, very early days called DSK, a custom knife horror story, which got thousands and thousands of views, but it also made me a whole lot of friends, strangely enough, because Dan Sullivan, DSK knives, fucked me over pretty damn bad. He outright lied about what he could do with the actual product. He, What I originally ordered, he did not give me. Then he gaslit the fuck out of me and he posted about me on Instagram, calling me a crybaby, some other shit like that, because I, you know, wanted what I paid for. It was this whole big ass drama thing, right? But the community, you guys came together, in particular a man named Ryan Palmer, Antic7, but also a few other people that don't want to be named, and created me what I would consider one of the perfect knives. Now, this is an actual representation of what DSK's acid rain finish is supposed to be. It's really hard to see on camera, but there are like hues of purple, of greens, of golds. It looks like a chemical spill genuinely, which is what the acid rain was supposed to be. Now on camera, it looks just kind of like a matte gray titanium, but like if you really look at this thing, especially in the light, it's hard to see in the garage even, but in the light outside, this thing is freaking gorgeous. It has a very cool contrasting bronze hardware, which is also sort of hard to see. You can see the clip pretty clearly, though. The blade, fail. The blade is now polished. Originally, I asked for stone washed flats and a polished blade, but I was given this massively acid washed, stone washed thing that's just not what I ordered. And also, the action has been completely fixed. It used to have very severe lock stick. And it was overall very, very, like, just cumbersome to move, right? If you wanted to flick it out, you had to use wrist. It would lock up, and you have to, like, really kind of pry the lock bar apart. But now, it deploys just fine. It drops incredibly smooth. And it's a knife that I will never sell. This... Maker, for whatever reason, has actually gotten really popular over the years, even though there's plenty of stories like mine. So I've been offered pretty crazy amounts of money for this knife. Um, I'll, I'll just never sell it. DSK himself, Dan Sullivan, piece of shit. But the community, you guys, just you, you reaching out, you trying to help, and you really going out of your way to look out for me, when at that point in time, I think I had like 100 subscribers and I was a fucking nobody will never not mean the absolute world to me. And this knife represents that to me perfectly. Like, I fucking love you guys. There's a reason why on my videos I always say I love you guys, because I really do love you guys. Just how can I not? You guys mean the world to me. So next is going to be the Cold Steel 8010. I also have a Demco 8010, which I was going to put in this video. but Due to uh, recent <laughs> adventures, I just like this one a little bit more now. Now, this has the Gunstock Original Goat Scales that make this thing weigh over a pound, first off. 
but also just make it feel much better in hand, much more substantial. It all just, it feels so good in hand. But those sharp eye viewers out there probably already noticed some things wrong with the blade. So as you can see here, we got nice big fat chips in the tip as well as in this thing right here. And this is because a buddy of mine happened to cut into a live wire. Now, first off, he wasn't supposed to be using this knife anyways, all right? This just happened to be on the counter. Um, and he reached to go grab his piece, which is also on the counter, and he missed his knife and then grabbed mine, which if we just strip in a wire, you know, it's not the best idea for this type of edge, but you can definitely do it without too much issues though. But it happened to be a live wire a very high voltage live wire. Now, if you're familiar with brass, brass does conduct, conduct electricity, cannot talk, but it mutes it a little bit. So the only reason why my friend did not die that day is because he happened to grab this cold steel 8010 with brass gun stock scales. And it's the only reason why he did not get electrocuted to the point of death. Um, he was still very much hurt. Uh, he was still, you know, shocking because um, it does not mute electricity entirely. It just kind of dims it down a little bit. So this saved my friend. Um, if he would have grabbed the knife he was going to use originally, he wouldn't be here right now. So I love this knife by itself. Um, I love the way it looks. I love the way it carries. I love the way it uses. He also bought me a replacement knife, which I've not put on the actual scales, and I probably won't because the story maybe is more to me than the actual knife itself. Um, so it's just one of those things that really mean something to me. Also, my boiler is currently going crazy right now, so if you hear a loud bang, a gunshot, or any weird noises, I apologize. This thing's on crack right now. So continuing on with that, I also have the Microtech Combat Troodon. Now, I just did a Microsoft Combat Trogon Legacy review pretty recently. but And I could have showed off a bunch of different ones, including my custom. That was a gift. Um, but this is more of a recent thing. I kind of want to talk about the story, right? So I purchased this from a guy named Marco for a friend of mine named Izzy. Because I owed Izzy some money. Marco lives in a different country. I forgot exactly where. Um, but he lives a long way away, right? So this thing got sent to the um, post office, got lost in the mail for a little bit there, went all the way across the country into my local post office, or, excuse me, his local post office, which then did some weird shit. So it was supposed to be delivered, right? But then it was held, and then it was flipped around to be where it had to be signed for, even though it was not a confirmation required, it was just a regular ass package, which is weird in of itself. And then within an hour of it being listed as being ready for, for pickup, it was then returned to sender. At that point in time, Izzy's like, I don't want to deal with this shit, man. You know, fuck this. Well, I'm a fighter, right? I don't stop. I am. A, if you ever piss me off, like, I feel sorry for you. My level of boredom and petty is extreme. So I found out a couple of different things about the post office, right? First and foremost is that this is a literally a multinational operation you know they have usps branches in other countries so there's millions and millions of employees for the post office one person can override their entire system so one lazy ass clerk decided they don't want to deal with this and they just went about returning back to sender right i spoke to the postmaster general of my state I spoke to the Postmaster General of the United States. I spoke to different levels of corporate, right? And not one person I spoke to was able to just go, oh, okay, never mind. It's a mistake. And then return the package back to where it's supposed to go to. Not one person. What they had said is that whenever a, 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 an employee or whatever, can't talk again. Also, it's very early in the morning. I just woke up. Uh, whenever an employee marks up as return to sender, it is now beyond our control. And that to me is insane. So this knife went, which came from a whole different part of the world, came all the way to California, excuse me, California, all the way to North Carolina. No, Virginia. Sorry, really tired, y'all. Then it went all the way back 
and then came all the way here again to my buddy, who then sent it over to me to sh for sharpening because it was kind of dull. The edge is not great. And the story of what this knife is to me is worth more than the actual knife itself. So I gave them an offer. Um, it was more than I paid for it. And I'm happy with it because one, I love the colorway. Black and orange is awesome. I'm a huge Halloween fan, clearly, and shit in the background. And you can't see the rest of the garage, but it's it's everywhere. Love that. Um, it's also one of my best edges I've done in a long time. Um, I know how to sharpen knives to be clear, but I'm not the best at it. This is a fantastic edge. And also, it's a crazy-ass story that I'm giving you guys the most abridged version of, so this video isn't two hours long. Because it went on and on and on and on and on, and it was insane. So, next up, we're going to have the Chris Reeve Knives Omnumzan in particular in the Monkey Edge Frag pattern and Tonto. Now, why is this my favorite knife? I have three other Omnumzans. Um, all relatively plain, to be fair, just different edge geometries and stuff like that. And this is my favorite. Well, the Amazon is one of my favorite knives of all time because it's just an absolute user. Um, I love the dynamics of this knife. I think it's an amazing looking knife. It fits my hands really, really well with the lanyard, which this will have on very, very soon. And it's just a knife to me that also has a long history. Um, I'm not going to get into why, it, for me personally, a knife has a history because it's kind of a honestly a bloody history and a lot of bullshit that i want to put in this video um but this knife in particular is a gift to me from mr mike bacola that he just decided out of the kindness of his own heart for no real reason because he didn't owe me anything just give me a freaking knife at that point in time was selling for like a grand um i think they sell for more now i'm not really sure um, they sold for about $700 originally. And he's like, hey, uh, you want this knife, right? You've been starting for this knife, right? And I was like, yeah, sure. Do you have a line on that? And instead of giving me over to the person who was selling it, because I would have just bought it myself, he bought it for me, which is insane. Um, this has also been glass blasted by Mr. Tom Jordan. The thumb studs and the ammo is also is done by Mr. Justin David. So you have an Unum Zan that is fidget friendly for flicking out, reverse flicking, basic slow roll. So you have all the benefits of the Unum Zan by itself, but it's more fidget friendly. It's more usable. It feels great in hand. And also it's from a friend that just did some shit, the kindness of his heart that I will never not love him for. Um, I, I don't understand why this community is so cool. Again, it's a sappy story, but I, I fucking love you guys. Now, finally, for my top five EDC knives of this month, but these are also some of my favorite knives of all time. We have the Demco Custom 8015. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, and I do mean years, you will have probably seen this knife before. Now, I've not busted it out in a while, but I did a torture test video on this shit, hurling it across the freaking table, bouncing it off of walls, slamming it into the ground, taking this and spy whacking the edge. I think it was like 150 times or whatever on the table. And this thing held up amazingly well. But it also, again, kind of created contacts in the community. It helped grow the channel, which then made me some of my best friends I've ever actually had in my life. Um, it helped me meet people that just kind of changed my life, um, including someone that actually inspired me to stop drinking because, I mean, I've used drugs almost my entire life. Um, I don't use any more, but I've done almost my entire life. But those were never really an addiction for me, right? I could use anything I wanted to without consequence and then just stop for years and I was fine. The only thing that I just really had a hard time stopping, though, was drinking. And because I'm six foot eight, 200 plus pounds, even when I'm a bean pole, um, right now I'm 264 pounds, but you know, even if I was down to like crackhead skinny, I'm still about 230. Because I weigh so much, because I am so tall, I can drink an absolute ton before I get drunk. 
And as a result, I have had alcohol poisoning I don't know how many hundreds of times. I could have died I don't know how many hundreds of times. The knife for this video, me torture testing it, doing the reviews and everything else, talking to some folks in the company as well as people in the community in general, kind of spawned me to go about changing my entire life for to be the person I am now, which is somebody that you guys, if you've been around a while, right, you've seen some drama with my ass, you've seen some instability, you've seen a lot of different shit, but like you've seen probably like, I don't know, two, three percent of what was actually there. I was not a good person at all. I would drink, do drugs, do a whole bunch of stupid shit in return, rip and rob and hurt people. And the story can go on and on and on for a very long time. But I don't want the video to be about that. It's about pe meeting people in the community and knowing people in the community and having experiences in the community and hearing people's stories and making friends and actually really caring about people that inspired me and changed my entire life. Now, I love this knife. I love the action. I love how weird it is. I just think it's an amazing knife in general. But it, there's a lot more to the knife because this knife in many ways saved my life. I went and made that video. I don't know where I'd be right now. I really, really don't. So this is a knife that I honestly rarely ever carry. Um, but I pull it out and look at it couple times a day, which sounds kind of weird, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, this is going to be the only video like this. Everything else is going to be things that I actually really carry and use and love, and that's going to rotate every single month. But these are knives, right, that all have stories that mean something to me deeply, that I have a love and an attachment to that will probably just never let me sell them. And they all bring me joy in some way, shape, or form. Or they just have a weird-ass story like the friggin' Postmaster thing, which, again, you're getting the most abridged version of. I talk to people for weeks on end, for hours on end, seven, eight hours a day. As soon as I got off of work, I was on, on the phone. As soon as I went to bed, that's when I got off the phone. Like, it was crazy. But they all have stories. They all have meaning. And they are my, you know, top five knives of all time for various reasons different price points, different styles, but they all have stories that make me something is just, they just make it special, you know, long story short. But we're 20 minutes in, so let me say a very sincere, I love you guys. When I say those words, they're not just a casual thing. They're not just a random ass tagline, right? I've had more drama in the community than most. I have met up and beat the fuck out of quite a few people in this community. I've had plenty of issues in this community. But I'm also had such an overwhelming just outpouring of love from you guys that I will never stop saying those words. Because I genuinely do love you guys. The people I had trouble with in the past, I still love you guys. It's just one of those things that there's been too much good that has happened. And that love will just never fade. So as always, folks, I love you all. Please take care. Have a fantastic day. And bye-bye.